The Unshackled Waves, episode 172. Broadcasting from Melbourne, Australia, this is The Unshackled Waves with Tim Wills. Brought to you by theunshackled.net. Hello everyone, great to have your company, and a special hello to all of our new YouTube subscribers over the past few days. Most of you came across to our channel courtesy of today's guest, one of Australia's most famous YouTubers bearing. He quite enjoyed our footage of Antifa yelling lame abuse at our Melbourne Bureau Chief Morgan Munro at the Lauren Southern and Stefan Molyneux Melbourne event, so featured it in his video summary of the event and Antifa's antics there. Hopefully we can make your subscription to this channel worth your while. The Waves podcast is a bit more of a serious show, but we aim here to offer an alternative, unfiltered perspective on the news than what you'll get from the mainstream media. If you don't know who Bering is, you all should. His channel comments on news and current affairs in his own crass and blunt style, and mocking the stupid people who constantly pop up online and in the media. He has also managed to gain half a million subscribers and also successfully monetized his content both through Patreon and sponsorships, and he joins us now to discuss his YouTube journey and to share the secrets of his success. Bearing, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Now, for, for all of us who've got into alt media, YouTube, there's always a tipping point that gets us motivated to, to start. Uh, uh, I know that uh, for me, it was born out of my frustration at uh, Trump derangement syndrome in, in 2016. We all sort of had political views beforehand, uh, f uh, followed current events, but what was sort of the, the moment for you where you sort of thought, right, I've got to start a channel, start fighting back against uh, these people? Uh, it wasn't so much. Um, it wasn't so much a, a feeling of right. I've got to start fighting back. I um, I uh, it, it was basically um, a, a matter of uh, I started a channel on a Friday night with a couple of mates and wanted to have a laugh at some people and take the piss out of some people and um, and and that's that's what I did. Um, uh, at the, at the time, I was um, I was working in uh, in commercial real uh, in commercial real estate. I, I was actually working at, at on uh, on one of the top floors of one of the buildings just behind you. Actually, I can see it right now. Um, but um, th that that job was um, was sort of wearing at me a bit, I suppose. No, it was it was a it was a bit of a, a bit of a release, I think. Um, just something to do on the weekends, and and then um, within a, a pretty pretty short amount of time, it got. Um, it got uh, got really busy, and, and uh, you know my, my channel gained a lot of followers and all that sort of thing, and um, and it started out earning the you know what I what I did for a living, so so I gave that the ass and um, and started doing YouTube full time. Yeah, it's it's pretty awesome to to have that being able to take it uh, that far. Was there strategies you employed to to grow your channel, or was it really just uh, people came to you organically? No, there was there, there there wasn't any real strategy. It was um, no, it was very ad hoc. It was it was all it's it's always been about just the content. So, um, you know, I, I think it's just about loving loving what you do. So I, I just just concentrated on making you know what I thought were good videos and and publishing them. And you know, short of like um, you know, you, you obviously do your stuff on Twitter and um. You know, you, you you do certain things on YouTube to to help you along, like you know, tagging and all that sort of shit. But um, but no, I, I never never had any grand strategy to to you know to be to be you know x you know x amount of followers or views or anything within a certain time frame. It just happened naturally. Uh, probably, or how I'd categorise you as uh, one of as an anti SJW uh, YouTuber, which is there's thousands of them now. But probably uh, the reason why you've been so successful is because you were uh, one of the first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying, but I mean, I, I also think um, if if I had to sort of um, uh, you know pin down my, my growth to something, I think it's because. I don't necessarily categorize myself. Um, I mean, I've seen a lot of YouTubers come and go that were, you know, a few years ago it was anti-feminist and then it turned into anti-SJW and, you know, there's, there's just been so many, so many different sort of labels to, to, to sort of throw on yourself. And, and I've, I've never done that. 
I've always just made made whatever whatever content I wanted to make. Um, as long as it's sort of you know, as long as it, as long as I'm passionate about it and 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 I believe the things that I'm saying, sort of thing. And you know, obviously you know, throw a bit of bit of sort of comedy on the top type thing. But um, yeah, I, I think I think a lot of my channel's growth has been down to the fact that I don't pigeonhole myself because when 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 you do that. Um, or others that I've seen that that do that tend to get a bit stale, and that hasn't happened with me because I, I don't sort of live within those borders. I, th I think anyway. So you don't see yourself adhering to a particular political philosophy. You more just react to uh, what's happening in the news and make value judgments on issues as they arise. Yeah, I think I think that's accurate. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm not a. I mean, I mean, even before I started my, my channel, I'm not a particularly political sort of person I, I probably am a little bit more now um and to be, look to be honest with you i mean uh, up until just just recently or, or up until when i sort of started the channel i, I was always you know i always considered myself a, a left-leaning liberal um but you know my, my channel has just always been about you know calling it as i see it and, and and as i've done that other people have have told me i'm i'm apparently a conservative I, I'm, not, I'm not sure but um um yeah i i am yeah I, I am reactionary and pretty pretty shamelessly at that uh probably what's contributed to your success is the the, the crassness of your uh delivery and uh, uh, lots of uh swearing and uh other uh, other types of uh language which uh, i think a lot of people uh, like that you're saying what they'd really like to say in real life but uh, find that they're often uh, too too polite to other people yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that, and and I think Americans just Americans love Aussie accents, especially when they say "cunt." They just they love it. <laughs> uh, uh, do you do you see yourself as in the YouTube world as a sort of ambassador for Australia? Um, not no, not really. Um, I mean, I mean, people sort of. Um, I think other people do somewhat, but no, not really. I'm, a, I'm an ambassador for, for me, man. Mm. And uh, obviously the the content of your videos, uh, it's mocking not just uh, the uh, people that turn up in, in news and, and current affairs, but also uh, the, the, the people who emerge on the internet saying really uh, uh, retarded things. Uh, so how do mm. you go found go about finding new content because you you post videos well, at least three times a week uh, uh i've noticed is uh, mm. so what gets gets you in the mood to write i've got to take this person down roast them oh it's just a, it's all just based on on you know what comes past me sort of thing i mean in, in the early days um you know in the very early days i'd, I'd go looking for looking for content to, you know, to 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 react to and that sort of thing but that, that didn't last long and you know it, it's all it's all just sent to me now like it's you know i get whether it's on you know discord or or you know on, i've got a reddit you know room or, or board or whatever they call them you know and, and just email and twitter and all that it's just the amount of the amount of content that that gets sent to me you know and it's you know bearing look at this you know respond to this type thing is just it, it's it's uh, unbelievable so it's just a matter of picking and choosing from that and then and people send me some really good shit yeah it's it's definitely good when people do uh, your research uh, for you now if you had to pick because uh, obviously you've been on youtube for a while what are the uh, the the most retarded uh, people you've taken down do you think what's what are, what are your highlights oh shit man there's there's, there's a few um there was a guy. There was a guy that, uh, and and this is, brace yourself. That there was a guy that had a fetish for women's periods. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so he he like, and he was just shameless about it, and and fucking like dirty. Like he 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 he'd talk about like going down on his girlfriend when when she had a period, like that sort of shit. It was, it was fucking disgusting. And he he this it's so bizarre. He. He had a, a thing for um, uh, fishing his girlfriend's tampons out of the bin, right? <laughs> and, he, oh. and, he, 
and he'd, and he'd fucking keep him in, in like a box sort of thing. And and when he's he, he made this video, he's all sad and shit. It was really emotional. Right? When his his girlfriend, I think, found out about it and broke up with him, and and he he was you know he's in love with her and he was all melancholy and all that. And and to to finally let her go, I think this is after some months of you know being depressed. To finally let her go, what he he fucking he went out on a boat on onto a onto a lake. And ha- and made like a, a fucking like a, a raft thing out of sticks and put his put his girlfriend's fucking used tampon like months old used tampons on this raft and set it on fire like did it did a fucking did like a fun- like a Viking funeral ceremony for his fucking girlfriend's used tampons I think that that's the, that's the, the most bizarre I think um, but um, most retarded probably there's a guy called. Um, uh, there's a guy called Michael Rollins from from New Zealand, and yeah, he he's he's fucking retarded. He's um, he's absolutely retarded. Just like you know, like he he'll he'll berate you for not believing that there's you know in infinity biological sexes, not genders. Like he actually argues that there's there's you know multiple sexes. Wow, type thing. That's... and you, you you know you're bigoted if you don't believe that and all that sort of shit. He's, he's unbelievable. But man, there's there's just there's, there's so many. I, I I forget half the videos that I've made. Like sometimes I go back through my videos and go, oh shit, yeah, I remember that. And and it, you know, and it's sort of fresh to me again. But yeah, there's just so many, man. Yeah, there, there's certainly people you, you you come across where it's like, wow, you you couldn't make this up, or or surely they 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 can't be serious. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, there, there's been some good stuff from from Australia recently as well. Like this this um this this shit show between uh, Lion Hellman uh, and Hanson Young has has been fantastic. <laughs> it's, it's been so entertaining. She's a she's insane. She's fucking insane. Yeah, I, I see that you've been having a lot of fun with that, and you actually got to, to interview uh, David Lionhelm uh, uh, on your channel. Was that was that sort of a thing where you sort of because uh, I know that uh, what you've just said uh, it, it's more about just the making the the content but did that did that sort of episode that there was a politician who was willing to stand up to the feminist did that was that a really wow you know this is a great moment you know for or australia or for politics yeah i mean yeah it was, it was good seeing seeing one of them finally stand up and by the way i i i I fucking I was rolling on the floor laughing when he when he when he suggested uh, the the PM stop being such a pussy. That was fucking brilliant. Um, but uh, yeah, no, it it was good. It was good to sort of see him come out and and stand up, you know, for for himself as a, not necessarily as a as a bloke, but just as an individual, you know, because so many of the of the the politicians today are just absolutely fucking cucked. You know, they'll they'll apologise for shit that they 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 didn't do. You know. Oh yeah, uh, definitely. And there's there's so much placating of the the feminists and and the media saying, "Oh, we're we're not the 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 people that you think we are." And of course, uh, the the minute you try and placate people of the left, they always demand more. It's it's never enough. Oh yeah, yeah. You you, you know you you never. Oh sorry. You you never never apologise to an SJW man because you know they'll. They'll just keep going, we, and once you apologise, it's you know they see it as a, a, an admission of guilt, and and they use that admission of guilt uh, to you know to, to basically berate you for forever. And are there any uh, social justice warriors or other people who uh, are your guilty pleasures? Like obviously, like you can't stand them, but they provide you with so much material. I know us at the Unshackled, if we're having sort of a barren run, we'll we'll check out what Yasmin Abdul Magid's been doing or or saying, and it's normally something hilarious. And so we'll just do a re- response to that. Are there are there people like that for you? Who, who who's that? I haven't heard of them. Who, I'm. I'm probably naive, but who who is that? Yasmin Abdel Magid. Yeah. You don't know who she is. I I've, I know the name, but I don't. No, I don't. Oh, she's the. Uh, she, she got famous uh, when she said on Q and A that Islam was the most uh, feminist religion, and then she did the. Anzac. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, I know her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's a beauty. Oh, <laughs> you scared me for a moment when you said you didn't know who she was. Yeah, no, I just I just couldn't connect them up. Yeah, she's she's fantastic. Yeah. Um, 
But uh, probably um, there's a there's a there's a guy from from America called uh, Steve Shives. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, it's, uh, I I've seen you do a few takedowns of him. Yeah, yeah, he's he's, he's amazing. Um, there's a there's a there's this um, there's this uber feminist uh, Christy Winters that that I used to I used to sort of um, sort of you know have a crack at a fair bit, but but she she actually turned. Um, pretty scary in that you know she was uh she she got a bit too sort of stalkerish like she was contacting contacting patreon and contacting fucking you know youtube just constantly sort of you know like full letters you know explaining how much of a bigot i am and how much you know they've got to get me off their platform and it just it became sort of too much you know she, she doxed me and all that sort of shit it's just it became a bit scary yeah there's there's some who uh, just it goes beyond like they're just a uh, retarded uh, stupid person where they they're actually sinister and they they they're dangerous yeah yeah and and you know you, you sort of you, you see you see him do this crazy shit and you sort of think I'm just I'm having a laugh at you on, on the internet fucking calm down you know you can be pissed off you can you know t tease me back tease me back call me some names you know for fuck's sake don't don't try and don't try and you know get at my income or something. That's 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 ridiculous. Now, obviously, your channel, it's uh, like you said, it's a comedy channel. It's for a, for a bit of a laugh. But do you do you see yourself affecting change? Because obviously, a lot's happened over the past uh, two to two to three years. There, uh, there, there was a great triggering with uh, Brexit and Trump in in, in twenty sixteen. And there's definitely uh, in Australia more people who are sort of waking up to uh, the left and their their totalitarian uh, tactics. Is, is that mm. something you're you're, you're aiming to do yourself that you you want to see the uh, the political conversation or the Overton window shift yeah look I, I'd love to see the Overton window shift but I mean as far as um, what I set out to do no it's it's I don't really um, you know set out to 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 go out and, and change change hearts and minds type thing um, I, I am, like you said, I am a, an entertainment channel. I'm a, you know, more a comedy channel um, than anything. But um, you know, the way I see it, my my role in, you know, as far as changing the Overton window type thing goes, is because because I do have the the, the entertainment aspect. I, I think my role is to sort of get that initial attention. You know, so I might. Um, I might appeal to someone who has never, who has never even considered, um, you know, anything but you know, regressive leftism type thing, and I'll I'll get their attention uh, and get them thinking about about things, and then they might move on to to you know, hopefully more serious people like like yourself and and, and other channels like you to to really start thinking about the issues. But um, yeah, so that's I think. I, I might fit there, but you know, at the end of the day, I'm more more entertainment than anything. Uh, because if you do take it too seriously, it can be quite uh, draining. That's what another YouTube uh, independent man found. That's why he stepped uh, away for a while. That if you get too ingrained in this battle and you, know, you see all of these uh, regressives just running amok, then it, then it can uh, d uh, depress you a bit, which is, which is not good and like not good for your content creation. Yeah, he's, look, he's, he's right. And I, and I think that's that's why I sort of always have kept it a bit more lighthearted because at the end of the day, I'm, I'm, I'm laughing at people where, where, where someone like Independent Man, who, who's a great guy, by the way, I was, I was really, um, yeah, it, it, it was it was sad when when he when he left a few months ago. I'm really glad he's he's sort of come back. Yeah, yeah, it's great. But um, yeah, the the way he he sort of approaches content, which is fantastic. You know, I, I absolutely love his channel. Um, but but I can see that sort of wearing down on you. Um, you know, more than more than sort of w what I do, and I think that's sort of why I I keep it a bit lighthearted. Yeah, uh, it's definitely worked uh, for you. I know. Oh. At the Unshackled, we we try to be as as news orientated uh, as possible because we know that there's battles that that we're going to to lose, and so we just uh, 
a report on on what's happening around uh, Melbourne. We, we we know that it's a a, a tough a, a tough battle, but uh, we know that it's it's the long game for for us. Yeah, for sure, for sure. How long have you guys been been going for? Uh, since uh, September 2016, when, uh, like I said at the beginning, it was when the Trump train was in full swing, and I just felt yeah, that I needed to, to counter on it because I was just so th sick of the the Trump is Hitler uh, comparisons that he was the the worst person ever because he said things mean things about uh, Megan Kelly, and I was just uh yeah, it wasn't that was that was fantastic. That that election was was fucking priceless. Mm. <laughs> I, I want. I can't wait for the next one. That was just absolute gold. Well, what do you what do you think? Uh, what, what can you see happening at the next big uh, U.S. election? What, what what what's your forecast? Oh, well, the the left have learned nothing from Trump's election. They they haven't, they, have they? Yeah, they they've just gotten worse and they've become more unhinged, which has been great for Trump because he's been doing a pretty uh, decent job. I mean, the U.S. economy is improving and. Uh, voters at the end of the day they always vote on uh the economy and they're just seeing the the left just carry on and of course the the mainstream media are still like carrying on when trump wrote kefefe they they couldn't stop talking about that <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's so yeah trump's in a in a, a good uh position um so yeah so i definitely think that yeah he's he's in with a good ch I, I don't think his re-election is guaranteed but yeah it's it's he's certainly in a good position do you reckon hillary will have another crack uh she shouldn't uh it, it'd be s stupid i mean she's such damaged goods uh yeah. i mean the 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 fact that she lost to a divided re republican party um sh should uh, say it all yeah yeah just her attitude i mean you know like that 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 speech that she she made that time where she where she said half of his supporters are racist and sexist and you know islamophobic and that's fucking that was just suicide that absolute suicide because she's just showing utter contempt for for the people that she plans to you know to to, to lead and it's just it's i don't think there's any recovering from that yeah, that uh, that was the deplorables uh, speech. Yeah, which, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Which, which everyone sort of owned. Uh, everyone referred to each other as deplorables from uh, yeah. from then on. But she's she's one of the the elites. I mean, both she and her husband, they're political animals, been in politics their whole life. They're they're pretty ruthless when it comes to uh, politics uh, and. Uh, there, there's obviously those uh, allegations that they've murdered a whole bunch of people because of these mysterious uh, deaths that are that have happened to people who've who've close to them. They just give off the the they, they represent what everyone hates about politics. Do you reckon, do you reckon she's an occultist pedophile? Um, no, I, I'm not that uh, conspiratorial. <laughs> <laughs> you reckon that's a bit far flung? Yeah, the the Pizza Gate was, uh, I think, uh, it, it was quite entertaining. Mm. Yeah. Now, uh, obviously, you're part of the the wider uh, YouTube community. Uh, your girlfriend, partner, wife, Sugar Tits, she's a um, YouTuber as well. I quite enjoy her videos. She's uh, what I what I call a classic um, Aussie bogan girl. Um, <laughs> she she tries. She tries. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but um, she, she she she's she's actually not not Aussie at all. She's 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 actually uh, she's uh, she's half English and she's got a bit of Filipino and a bit of uh, Spanish in her. So she and she's a she's a British citizen. So she's she's not Aussie at all. It's it's uh, funny to say that. Well, she does a good job at uh, cultural appropriation. Then she does. Yeah, she does. Yeah, uh, and obviously in the YouTube community, there's a lot of back and forth uh, videos of uh, YouTubers will have arguments with each other. A lot of the time, it's not too serious, or oh, well, sort of oh, not serious in the sense that you're actually uh, not liking each other. It's more just an exchange of ideas. I remember there was a bit mm -hmm. of a uh, back and forth uh, between you and some other YouTubers over the. The, the same sex marriage vote that we had uh, last year where they, uh, they responded to you and then you responded uh, to them uh, do you uh, do you enjoy that yeah yeah absolutely I mean yeah it's I mean it's all about um, it's all about the exchange of ideas you know we're all, all trying to get our, our point across and uh, and so um, yeah no it's I'm, I'm all for that you know and as long as you 
as long as you um, you approach it in good faith. I mean, there's I think there's a lot of people out there that that uh, that get caught up in in this idea that you know they're they're always right, they're always going to win the argument, and and that that can sort of you know lead them to this place where where they won't back down, you know, un, under any circumstance, or not, not back down, but they won't reconsider their views under any circumstances, and it's that's a dangerous place to to, to be in. I mean, on on that issue uh, that, that you bring up, I, I I I initially said, you know, I'm happy to change my, my views on this, and and that I did. I didn't end up voting in that um, in that referendum, uh, but but the guy that I had the back and forth with, Morally Gray, who's who's a great YouTuber. Yeah, he, he 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 managed to change my mind on that. Is there any uh, sort of YouTube spats which have got a a bit out of hand in, in your opinion? Only only the the one I was talking about before the uh, that that um, uh, Christy Winters, the the horrible feminist, you know, the one that got a bit sort of stalkerish. Uh, other than that, no, no, they've all been pretty pretty tame. Do you think that, because uh, obviously you're a uh, big star on YouTube, you're about to crack uh, 500,000 subs, do you... Do did, you did, it, did it this morning, man. Did it this oh, morning. you did it, the, did it this morning as, as we speak. Uh, congratulations. Yeah. Thanks, man. Uh, obviously, it's a bit different from being a normal uh, celebrity. Do you, like, obviously, you know, you're... Uh, bearing you're the you're the bear do you feel like a like a celebrity do other youtubers do you find that sometimes it goes to their their head or everyone's sort of still quite chilled in the youtube community no it, it does go to a lot of people's heads i don't consider myself a celebrity i i, I sort of cringe when i when i hear that um i'm a i'm a, a guy with a youtube channel who who a lot of people happen to to agree with you know um it's that simple but um um uh, yeah, I think um, that you often see people who um, you know who who get a you know a couple of hundred thousand subscribers or, or even less that it really goes to their head and and most of the time that's that's uh, that's exactly the point they start going back down. Um, as the YouTubers I've interviewed are pretty uh, laid back, in, including yourself, I remember when I interviewed uh, Hunter Avalon earlier this year, even though he's got 300,000 uh, subscribers, he was very um, yeah, relaxed and yeah, we were able to have a, a good discussion, which was good. Yeah, he's a good. He's a he's a really good guy, Hunter. I'm I'm a big fan of Hunter. He's uh, he's a, he's a, he's good to chat to. You you're right. He's he's pretty laid back. Now, obviously, you've been able to successfully monetize your uh, YouTube channel, which is it's quite uh, difficult to to do for a lot of people uh, in in the media. You've uh, obviously quite uh, successful on uh, Patreon. What you obviously Patreon, what you've got to do is not just uh, obtain patrons you you've got to uh, retain them manage them uh, make sure that it's worth their while uh, how, how have you uh, been able to successfully do that because you've got over 400 uh, in terms of patreon um, I mean I've had a I've had a patreon you know since pretty early pretty early in but um, to be honest with you I, I I up until very very recently I haven't um, I haven't put a lot of thought behind how I how I run my Patreon and how, how I manage it. It's only been in in the last couple of months, to be honest with you, that I've that I've sort of put a bit of thought into how I how I approach it, and um, and and it's it's working really well. I mean, I I think I've, I've doubled my, my patronage in in you know a few months type thing, um, and you know it's growing at a good rate. But um, I, I think um, you know. Page, Patreon is all about. I mean, people, people sort of wanting something more. I mean, you know, they can they can watch your videos on YouTube for free. Uh, Any anyone can do that. Obviously, um, they go to Patreon because they they want something more. Um, and so one of the things that that um, or a couple of things that that I've I've sort of managed to put in place that um, you know that that help that growth is, um, you know. Uh, I've had a lot of videos deleted off off YouTube over the over the years for you know being too fucking edgy you know whatever it may be, um, and so I've got I've got like a private video server where I've, I've put all those videos on there. So you know if you become a patron, you, you get access to all of them instantly. So 
you know, if you become a patron sort of thing, you get you get instant access to all this additional content that you can't see on YouTube. So it's a, it's a value add sort of thing. Um, the other cool thing about Patre uh, Patreon is um, you can you can actually um, uh, pair it with uh, with Discord. And so when people become a patron, um, if they've got their their Discord account registered with Patreon, it, it automatically adds them to your Discord server. So I've got uh, I've got a patron only Discord server that I you know when I when I put a video up I'll I'll go in into the Discord server and just chat with people for for you know an hour or two after after I release the video and that that works really well too people people love it. Wow, interesting. Yeah, that's certainly something that probably we should look at uh, as mm. well. And I noticed that uh, originally your uh, Patreon it was per video, but you've changed to uh, per month. I have. Yeah, I've. I've I've just recently, as I said, I, I only just recently started to to really think about how I approach page, Patreon, and and that's one of the things that that I, I changed, um, which which actually really hurt uh, when I first did it because um, because with Patreon people um, people, or, or, or for example, when you when you have your, your Patreon set to per item, people will uh, will pledge a certain amount. And they'll put a cap on the number of times per month that can be charged. So, um, for example, say you became a five dollar Patreon, you might say, well, a maximum of, of five charges per month, right? So I might be able to make you know twenty five dollars out of out of your patronage. When you when you convert a per item account across to a a per month account, it automatically sets their pledge to um, to, to to a, a single amount of of that pledge. So it'll, it'll go from Twenty-five bucks potentially per month to five bucks a month, and and so that that's a that's a pretty big hit sort of thing when you when you first change over, but I think at the end of the day, um, the per month model is is a lot easier to understand um, because more people run on on that sort of model. Um, I found that people were were pledging and then. Um, you know, they, they'd sort of, they'd message me and say, hey, you know, bearing, I, I, I pledged five bucks, but it's charged me, you know, 30 bucks, you know, what's, what the fuck's going on? And so I was having to do refunds and all that sort of thing. And I'd rather just not, I'd rather just have it, have it absolutely clear from the, from the get go. So I think that, you know, w while I took a, a, a bit of a hit when I changed over, um, I, I think, uh, ultimately it's a, it's a good thing because people have got more confidence to, to, to pledge. Yeah, uh, it's, it's certainly, like I said, you've got over 400, so you're certainly doing something right in, in that regard. And you've also started opening your videos now with, with sponsorships. Now, obviously, your content is quite uh, edgy, and there's um, the mass uh, YouTube uh, demonetization where all these uh, corporations have said, oh, we don't want our content being, or our ads fe uh, featured on, you know, this sort of content. So, uh how have you been able to to build that as well? Um, yeah, that, that's that's an interesting um, interesting aspect of of monetization. I've actually got a um, I've got a I've got a, a an agent um, based in in LA that uh, that specialises in in uh, in in basically getting sponsorships. So he he's a, a conservative himself, and and he. You know, he he knows a number of business operators, and he, he you know he's constantly networking uh, with with you know business operators, and and he he approaches them, um, you know, up front and says, look, I'm 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 a conservative, and I manage a number of conservative YouTube channels, um, and and so they they know what they're getting from from the get go, sort of thing, um, and so yeah, that that works really well. He he uh, he he more or less is out there scouting for me and and just brings these these deals to me not I, I don't take all of them you know like you know sometimes you'll get um uh you know things like you know cryptocurrency you know dealers and and markets and that sort of thing i, I tend to shy away from them because i don't really understand it that well myself so i don't mm. really want to endorse it but but something like a you know a vpn uh is is ideal because you know um Anyone on the internet can can benefit from a VPN. So you've you've got a you've got a you know, a wide market. It's a it's a it's an affordable product, and you know it's it's straightforward. So things like that are, are great, and you know the, it's it's good money too. These these people are willing to to pay really good money for um 
you know, to get to your audience. Yeah, I, I can imagine. And I certainly agree that the whole Bitcoin thing, it's, it's quite nerdy uh, for me. So I understand that. Yeah, and and look, I'm I'm sure it's uh, I'm sure it's um, you know it's it's all legitimate and all that, but um, I, I just I I sort of I'm reluctant to to sort of say you know this 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 thing is great you should yeah. you should look at this thing and then you know if there's a if if it loses half its value in in six months I, I don't want to sort of be the guy who pointed mm. you know tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of, of people to. To, to lose all that money sort of thing. Whereas with, with a VPN or, or something simple like that, you know, they've, uh, they might not like the product, so they stop paying for it. You know, they're not going to lose wealth. Yeah, I think this, uh, I call it the Ben Shapiro strategy where he says, I use this product myself. I can, I can recommend it. That's all of his live ads are always like that. And so he only endorses a product if he's tested it first or knows that it's good quality. Yeah, I, I got approached by um, the the people. I've heard Ben Shapiro do um, do a promo for. It's like fucking. It's like some sort of doomsday fucking like food kit or something like wow. dried dried food and shit. That's it's like, not you know, his if, style. If, if the end of the world comes, you know, you can feed your family on these fucking dried apples and all that sort of shit. And, and that was a bit. Um, that was a bit a bit weird for me, but uh, yeah, I, I I doubt he's I doubt he's uh, he's fed his family fucking petrified food, so he hasn't he hasn't tried everything he fucking advertises. <laughs> <laughs> Now, obviously, you went through a tumultuous time when your your channel, original channel, was terminated, and there was a mm. lot of uh, people who were suspicious about the reasons. Was this YouTube cracking down on, I know you don't like the word, conservatives or right-wing people? How, uh, how did you respond to that initially? Well, it's not that I don't like the word conservative. I've got nothing against the word. It's just I'm, I'm not not a hundred percent sure that I, that I am one. I, I probably am, but I, I, I don't know. Um, which, which time do you mean? There's, there's been a, there's been a couple of times, man. Oh, when your uh, channels are gone down. Yeah. There's been, been a couple of times. Uh, I'm referring to the one where it turned out that there'd been a copyright claim on your original bear. Oh yeah, yeah. So that was the that was late two thousand and sixteen, I think. Yeah, that was. Um, I mean, that look, that was ultimately that that was my fault. You know, I, I was using a a copyrighted uh, character from from a it, it was from a, a cartoon, um, a a a cable television based cartoon from Canada, and um, and the way that happened was, I mean, yeah. As as I said, I, I started my channel as a as a hobby type thing, it was never anything serious, and, and I never, never expected or, or thought that it was going to, to lead to anything substantial. So, um, when I started my channel, um, uh, you know, Bearing has actually been been my nickname for, for you know for a while, and so the it was a case of I, I just you know searched cartoon bear on on Google type thing to to find a bear to match the nickname. Came across that one and and you know without sort of thinking about it, which which was you know stupid in retrospect, um, chose that and you know and away we went. You know thinking oh, I'm only going to be an ob obscure channel now. You know you 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 quite often see YouTube channels with you know I see channels with Simpsons characters and you know South Park characters and you know Christ knows what characters as as their avatars, and and you know you can get away with it when when you when you. You, you know, you're not not so huge type thing, but um, you know, obviously you, you 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 attract attention when you when you start, you know, getting to a substantial size. So, so they they um they 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 gave me a number of copyright claims, and which was you know which is fair enough. It was it's, it was their property, um and uh, and the way we resolved that was really really simple. I, I you know I got in touch with them and and told them that basically. I just said, look, you know, it was nothing malicious. It was um. It was naivety. Um, how can we resolve this? And so um, we, we came to an arrangement. You know, I, they, they were happy to withdraw all of the the copyright claims as long as I, um, you know, got rid of the, the character from the from the channel. So, so that's what I did. I, I commissioned my own my own bear, and uh, and that's that's how that happened. 
it was difficult to rebuild from that because obviously having your channel go uh, offline you you basically lose your ability to to interact and or do to do your job uh, uh was, was that hard, hard to do how did you approach that no no not really um i mean I, I was i think my channel was was offline for you know it was only like four days or five days so it wasn't long at all um and you know the the subscriber base was there you know the, the channel was was terminated but you know youtube don't don't actually delete it they sort of hold it in limbo for a while sort of you know thinking that you know there could be a, a resolution here and, and and there was so you know the channel was reinstated so it, it's not a case of my you know that was my old channel it's still the same channel it's always been the same channel um you know it was just reinstated with with the you know the same subscriber base and all that uh, and i think at the time i had um oh, i think it was just under two hundred thousand subscribers or something so it was just a matter of you know the, the channel went back up it didn't have any content but it was just a matter of you know start start rebuilding uh you know start start making content and in, in a funny way it was actually um it was actually quite profitable <laughs> as it turned out because i had all, all of a sudden i had this this huge backlog of videos like i had you know something like 200 videos that were that were already made they were they were just sitting there but had this this um this copyrighted uh character in them so all i had to do was um you know to to get a to get another video out um you know in my spare time all, all i had to do was put one of those videos in the editor and and chuck the, the new bear avatar over the top and it was a re-release you know because people people appreciate seeing these videos back you know they re-watch them and you know, it's a, it's another it's another release. It's it's you know I get to release it again and and profit off it again. So ultimately, yeah, it was it was funny. It uh, it was actually um it was actually quite a money spinner. Yeah, that, that's not a bad way to to look at it. Now, obviously, since you started to gain uh, a lot of uh, prominence and uh, because you were known as bearing a cartoon bear, there was a lot of people who wanted to know uh, who you were and uh, like you said there's there's lots of people who wanted to to dox you but uh, you eventually revealed uh, who you were but uh, to, to keep you wanted still to maintain the channel as uh, bearing uh, uh, you're doing this interview as um, as uh, bearing but you also have a, a second channel now which is more uh, about or who you are and mm. your other interests such as music yeah that's right yeah it's it's funny um people uh, a, a lot of people um were were really sort of insistent that they never wanted to see my face um you know like um like when i when i sort of got docs you know it was kind of like well you know you've you've seen my face now but a, a lot of people actually avoid going to my second channel and, and seeing my face because they they don't want to to sort of detach the, the, the voice from the from the cartoon as, as weird as that sounds it, you know it's it's really strange but um yeah so so i do i keep i keep the two you know very very separate type thing but um yeah i i, I don't i don't sort of I don't sort of do uh, you know, on-camera videos a whole lot on my second channel either. You know, there there are videos on there that if people want to, you know, people are curious, they can go and see my face. But um, yeah, at the end of the day, I, mean, I don't want to fucking brush my hair. I don't want to clean up my studio. Fuck that. <laughs> it's, it's extra work. Yeah. Oh, it's, it takes quite a lot of work for for us to get the our studio looking like it is. So yeah, if you <laughs> if you're able to just do audio only, you don't need to worry about. You can be in a messy room and just record your videos. That's it. I'm having a wank right now, mate. <laughs> okay. Too much information. <laughs> Now, uh, obviously, you've you've reached uh, five hundred thousand subscribers. Uh, I reckon you'll reach a million uh, pretty soon. So the sky's the limit, basically. Uh, do you uh, do you plan to just keep doing what you're doing, or um, would you do anything different, such as like obviously you mainly just do YouTube? Would you ever go out onto the the streets and do things there, or attend events, or do mainstream media? Look, I I would um, I I would attend events. I, I think um, 
um like there's a the, the guy that runs that uh the the, the uh, i forget what it was called some some libertarian ah uh, the friedman in... conference yeah yeah i'm talking to them about speaking at, at next year's one of them um so I, I would do things like that i'm happy to do that but as far as sort of going out on the street and and being an activist no i'm not i'm not really interested in that um look i'll i'll, I'll keep making you know bearing content you know as long as people want to watch it type thing but yeah it's 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 not my only uh it's not my only sort of um line of interest either i'm, I'm a musician as well so i um i i actually um spend a fair bit of time you know making making music as well like that you know that, that gets released on on spotify and itunes and all that um so yeah it's sort of i wouldn't say it's 50 50 divided but it's um i probably do 20 percent music and and 80 percent bearing and, and and other and other bits and pieces. Have you been able to get some of your YouTube followers hooked on your your music? Being able to migrate them there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Definitely. Um, with the music, I, I find it's um, uh, it, it's a, it, it is obviously a smaller a smaller uh, fan base, but I think um, they're very very dedicated. So the the, the music. Uh, people that like the, the music are very, very sort of loyal and very, um, you know, they're there every time type thing, whereas people sort of come and go from, from Bering. Well, Bering, it's been great to chat to you today. Thanks uh, once again for uh, giving us a shout out in your uh, video this week and uh, sending a lot of people to our channel. And, and thanks uh, again for, for giving us your time today. No, pleasure, mate. Th it's great being here. And keep up the the lols and the uh, the hilarity. I will do, mate. Good on you. All right, everybody. That's the show for today. If you, for some reason, haven't done so, subscribe to uh, Bering's YouTube channel and also his second channel, which we discussed, which is simply called Patrick. The Super Saturday five by-election results are now known, with Labor retaining the marginal seats of Longman and Braddon, meaning Bill Shorten's leadership is secure. The Coalition also failed to regain the South Australian seat of Mayo, uh, with Rebecca Sharkey of the Centre Alliance being returned. And now Malcolm Turnbull's leadership is under the pump. You can relive our analysis of the results as they came in by checking our election night live stream, which is on both our Facebook page and YouTube channel. The next major public event happening in Melbourne is the March for Men on Saturday the 25th of August at Federation Square in Melbourne to help draw attention to uh, men's issues uh, which uh, are constantly shoved on the sidelines by the, the, the mainstream media who always promote the, the feminists agenda it is being organised by rising local media star Sydney Watson so we hope if you're in the Melbourne area we will see you all there. Also don't forget to grab your tickets for the next big name coming down under which is former UKIP leader and Brexit champion champion Nigel Farage who is visiting all the major cities as well as Auckland. You can book your place including various VIP passes at nigellive.com.au. Also please remember we can't do this without your support so please consider becoming a, a patron of The Unshackled at patreon.com slash The Unshackled or send us a one-off contribution by PayPal at paypal.me slash The Unshackled. So thanks once again for your company and we'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in to The Unshackled Waves. Please visit theunshackledwaves.net for all the ways to subscribe and follow the show. Don't forget to pick up your free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and keep checking out theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.